Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can back up a Linux PC to a Synology NAS using Active Backup for Business. Now this is a beta feature and it was recently released with DSM-7. So you might run into a few problems, but generally everything should function the way that it's supposed to. So we're first going to take a look at how you can configure it. And then a little later in the video, we're going to take a look at how you can restore individual files from the Active Backup for Business restore portal. So before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So first, you have to ensure that you have Active Backup for Business installed on your NAS. If you don't have it installed, you're going to have to go through and install it. And at the end, it's going to ask you to um, activate it with a Synology account. So you're going to have to run through the installation and the activation. And then after that, you're going to be able to launch the tool. Inside of there, you should see a section for physical server. So while you might have a Linux desktop, it's classified inside of Active Backup for Business as a server. So select physical server, and then you're gonna see the option for Linux. Inside of there, you should see add device. And as soon as you select that button, you're gonna see how you can add a Linux device. And what you have to do is you have to download the correct package. So I am using uh, Ubuntu, and for that reason, I'll be downloading the Debian package, but you'll have to go based on whatever Linux distribution you're using. Now, one thing that I wanna point out here is that you can download this on the individual device. So if you're using a, uh, a Linux desktop environment, you can go through and download it on the device, or you can download it on a different device and transfer it to your Linux device. So whatever you prefer will work. You just have to ensure that you get the installation script onto the device. So after the script is on the device, you can go through and navigate to the folder that contains it and you're gonna have to unzip it. So after you do that, you're gonna see that two files are extracted. There is an install.run file and a readme file. Feel free to go through and read the readme. Um, you should definitely understand exactly what you're going to be installing, but the install.run is just an install script that will install everything that we need. So after everything is unzipped, you can run through and run the command sudo dot forward slash install dot run. And like I said a little earlier, this is going to run through and install all the dependencies and everything that you're going to need to connect to your Synology NAS. So that might take a minute to install, but at the end of it, you should see that everything was installed successfully. And then you're gonna be able to run the command sudo abb-cli space c. So this is just the active backup for business client, and we're gonna be using it to connect to our Synology NAS. So after you run that command, it's going to run through and ask you to enter in the server address. So that will be the IP address of your Synology NAS. You're going to have to give a username and then you'll have to type in your password as well. As soon as you start to connect, you're going to see that the SSL certificate of the Synology NAS might not be trusted if you're not using a domain name. Now, since we're doing everything on our local network, that is not a concern to us. If for whatever reason you're trying to back up a destination device, meaning outside of your local network, onto your Synology NAS, and you're not using something like a VPN, you're gonna to wanna to use a domain name. So that's a little out of scope for this video, but I just wanna make that clear. Now, after you do that, you're gonna see at the bottom that whatever you have as the default template inside of Active Backup for Business will automatically apply to this device. So this is just gonna run through and it's gonna show you all of the backup settings for this specific device. Now, you're gonna see a little later that we can change those, but you can select Y, which is the default, and you can proceed, and then it should connect back to your Synology NAS. Now, one quick thing here is if you run the command sudo abb-cli-h, you're gonna see a bunch of different commands you can run. Now, I'm not too sure exactly what you need to do unless you need to reconnect to your NAS or something like that, but this is just a command that you can run to see all the commands that you can run, if that makes sense. So now that we're connected to our NAS, if you go back to DSM and you are inside of uh, the Linux section, you should see the device that you just connected and it should be green showing that everything is connected. Now this does not mean that a backup's been run, but we're gonna look at that in a second. So if you head over to the task list section, you're gonna be able to edit this task here. And this task is what you'll use to determine exactly what you want as far as the backup goes. 
So inside of the general section, you'll see that you can back up the entire device or you can back up only the system volume or even a customized volume if you want. The two options below that are for data transfer compression and data transfer encryption. These are checked off by default, so I would leave those. Then you'll see inside of the schedule section exactly when this task will run. So if you want the task to run every single day, you can change that here or once a week, whatever you want. Now inside of the retention policy, this is actually a pretty big thing. Um, so you should enable a retention policy and this will determine how many versions you'd like to keep. So as far as how many you should keep, it's kind of up to you, but I would recommend having a retention policy on and then keeping say seven days or 14 days so that you have one or two weeks of backups that you can restore from. So those are some of the main settings that you can check out. Now, keep in mind that the system at this point has not been backed up. So if you'd like to back it up, you can select the backup button and that will run through and back up the device. Now keep in mind that this will back up the total number of storage space that you're currently using. So if you're using a terabyte of data, it's gonna go through and it's gonna back up a full terabyte of data. So depending on how much data you have, that will determine how long the initial backup will take. Now from this point forward, deduplication will be used. And what that means is that when you back up tomorrow, it will check to see what has changed and it will add a new version for that specific file. So the key thing to understand with deduplication is it's not backing up an entire new version of that file, it's just backing up the changes of that file. So you can restore back from you know 10 days ago, but if that file is one gigabyte, it's not gonna store 10 gigabytes of files on your NAS. It's gonna store one gigabyte or a little bit more than that. That's what deduplication does. It's not gonna take your one terabyte hard drive and back it up 10 different times for a total of 10 terabytes. It's gonna run through and it's gonna back it up once and you'll be using a little bit more than one terabyte and then whatever you're using for snapshots. So whenever your device is finished backing up, you're gonna be able to open the Active Backup for Business Restore portal, and you're gonna be able to restore any of your files. So this portal will allow you to go through and it will allow you to pull up any task you have. So for example, if you have five machines backing up, you'll be able to come in and look at all the backup information for those machines. So inside of here, I have all of my uh, data, and at the bottom here, you're gonna see the version history. So this goes based on the retention policy that you specified. So if you go backwards, I only have one version because this is just a test. Um, but as time goes on, you're gonna have multiple versions and you'll be able to go back to a specific file at a specific point in time. So if you need to go back two weeks, for example, and your retention policy is set for two weeks, you'll be able to restore it from that specific date. So that's the main way that the restore portal works. It's actually relatively straightforward. Um, but it's important to understand how it works because you don't want to have to worry about it if you need it, meaning that if something goes wrong, you don't want to have to hope that your backups are running and that they're um, you know, recoverable. So that is how you back up a Linux PC to a Synology NAS using Active Backup for Business, and that's how you restore. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.